We asked Pete Agnew of Nazareth why he's still doing it. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. Remember, the entire interview is also available. If you like the little chunks, this is great for you. But if you want to hear the entire thing and the podcast, we've got links in the description of this video where you can check it out. As mentioned in our last interview, Pete Agnew is the last remaining member of that heyday for Nazareth in the 70s. And they did really well in the 80s as well. Manny Charlton is gone. So is their longtime singer, Dan McCafferty. He retired a few years ago, though he did release a solo album two years ago. And we lost Daryl Sweet in 1999. We asked Pete Agnew why he's still doing this. Scott asked, he says, you know, I, I get a feeling that Pete has never-ending music in his head. He says, is that why he continues doing it? You're the last remaining member of that classic lineup. At the same time, you've got this band that seems to be on fire. Why, Pete Agnew, do you continue doing it now? Oh, this is because this is what I do, really, is the, is the simple answer. Is this, this, this is what I do. I mean, music is, has been my whole life. And, and if it, since I was very, very young, I mean, since, I mean, I, my first, I was 11 in my first band, you know, and, mm. and, and, that's, and that's all I ever really wanted to do, you know. So, and you just, I mean, nobody, you don't really, you've noticed nobody really retires in this game. You die, you know, you just... At some point, somebody doesn't make it to the next gig. Well, that'll be me, you know. That'll be, you know, there's all the gigs are up there on the sheet. You just hope you make them all. And there'll be one that I won't. And then that'll be it. That'll be all gone. But, I mean, there's nothing makes you do it. You know, it's just, it's, uh, it's uh, I'm not saying that, you know, I'll, uh, I completely, I'm looking forward to uh, every every gig. You know, there's some nights I would gladly pay somebody three times the fee so as I could stay in the hotel. I mean, that happens, but that happens to everybody in any job they're doing. But most of the time, I'm really, really happy to be on the stage and to play. You know, it's a, a, I do enjoy playing. Like, I love the last one, too. And I told you that when we talked on the phone the first time, the first interview I did with you. But there was just, yeah. like, you're right. I, I so get the fact that you do this. You go, wow, this is like, you know, sometimes everyone, artists surprise themselves all the time saying all these pieces came together and we created this. But what was the vibe like going into, like, we were, do, we were dealing with the pandemic. Uh, did you have extra time? I mean, what was the vibe like going into it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was funny because, you know, we had two, well, we had a year and a half before, We'd, we went into the studio. And when we went into the studio, they still had all these rules and regulations over here, you know, with uh, pandemic, you know, the quarantine and, oh, God, you know, testing every day. As what well, I always used to say is we actually, you know, we wrote this album in jail and we recorded it on parole. You know, that's what, <laughs> that's, that's what, it's, that's what it felt like, you know. And we, we, we got into the, when we got to the studio, I, I mean, the, the ah, I'll, I'll give you an example. When when when, when they did the, the actual said right, that's lockdown as they called it here. You know, everybody had to stay in. Well, after about three months, about three months into it, Jimmy started sending around, and Jimmy had sent me twelve songs. I mean, twelve really good dem really good demos as well, because he does he does very good re recordings, you know. And it was like, God, if they keep this up. By the time we get to the next album, we're going to have 150 tracks, you know. And it was so. What was happening is people were writing like oh, they were writing like mad, you know. And so we ended up with a, a lot of material, you know, a, a, a real lot of material. And so when it came to actually record, when we got to the studio, well, actually we'd pass stuff back and forwards to each other, you know, um, sending it, and sending it back and forth to each other, and trying to make some kind of decisions before we got to the studio. Because normally we go to the studio with all the songs that we've got written and say, all right, play them back. Let's see which ones we're going to do. We couldn't do that this time because we'd have been in the studio for a month, you know, before we recorded anything. So we tried to make some kind of choice before we got there. But we still had some of like 20 songs, you know, when we went in there and saying, uh, okay, right, well, this is the... Then, then what we did is sort of started recording them and seeing which ones sounded sounded good you know so what, what, what sort of sounded the best you know and uh, and these were the ones that, that, that sort of grabbed us but um, it was it was very exciting and and it was it was a weird and then again it was a weird album because um, our, our, our um, producer he's Swiss he comes from Switzerland and he had to come in and he had to you know he had to uh, quarantine for 10 days and other so and we're going to the studio but then our singer Carl he lives out near Vienna in Austria 
So if for him to come back and forward, it would have been a joke. You know, he'd have been quarantining. And everything. So what we were doing is, uh, Jimmy and Lee and me, we were in the studio with the producer, and we were recording, you know, and sending the files to Carol. And Carol was recording because he was recording his own vocals, you know, in his own studio in, in Vienna. So that's how we did it. We never actually, we never had the four of us in the studio. Mind you, there's a lot of bands record like that anyway these All days, the time. you know. But, you know, that's what But we never actually, we never saw Carol until, uh, yeah, well, after the album was finished, you know. <laughs> so, not a bad track off, not a bad track off this album. I've got to say, that I love the way that you end with a blues song, which is the slowest tune. But I mean, I love the way you start it with like Strange Days, straight ahead rocker, which indeed uh, we do live in strange days. But I'm going, the the uh, the the pacing on this album, you know, the how, how, from one song to the, you, you've referenced that a while ago, the fact that they all sound, they all have their own personalities, but they're all part of the same family and it just works. Not a bad track and it's rare when I say that. That's great. So, yeah, but I said, you know what? It's, it's funny. Somebody said to me, uh, it was last week, it was one, the guy, that, the, uh, Keith, the guy that kind of runs a website and stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, he said, it's really good. It's on, uh, it's on uh, iTunes. He said, you know, you can, they're advertising it on iTunes now, you know, and, and you know how they give you the little circle and you can play like a minute and uh, yeah. but whatever it is, you know. And I thought, here, this is great. So I went, of course, they've got them in different orders. They changed the order already. But I thought, this is a good way to dig the album if you don't want to play that. So I got it on iTunes and I was going, so I got it on iTunes and I was going, now, if I was a person just having a look at this album and I don't know it, this is how they would hear it, you know. So I thought, right, I'll do this. So I was playing it, and I'm getting. I think, well, I like that track. And then going to the next, track, I thought, and so I was, I was really enjoying it. And I thought, hey, this is the way I'm going to listen to my album after this. You know, <laughs> get a minute and a half. You know, that's good. Yeah, that's great. You know, so it was really great. And when I was listening to it, I thought, you know, listening to it, I thought, yeah, these, these are. This is a good album. It's a good, it's a good mixture of songs. You know, without um, being, you know, there's nothing on there that feels as if it shouldn't. It's. It shouldn't be there. It, 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 like, it, it, you know, I mean, okay, you know, when, when I did, when I wrote, um, you know, um, uh, you, you, moved, you made me. Obviously, I wrote that and I sung that, you know, and, and that was, well, it was my 25th album, you know, Pete's going to get a song on it and you're going to, where are you going to put it? Well, you're going to put it at the end because you wouldn't put that in the middle of a, a big rock album, but you can, you know, say goodbye with it, you know. But other than that, the other 13 tracks really, really, you know, match if you like. You know, they're, they're, although they they're different, but they match. They 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 add up to making that that great vibe. I think. And uh, let the whiskey flow. Great guitar riff, man. I just <clears throat> from Jimmy. I love that so much. Like I went back and I listened to it again before listening to the next song. I mean, that's I, you know I haven't done that in years where I have a song and I go, yeah, I got to hear it again. Uh, you know? <laughs> Now, that was one of Lee's. He wrote, he wrote that one. That's his, that's his Scottish nationalist song. That's his, that's his pissed off against the government song. <laughs> I don't, actually, I don't agree with every word of it, but it's good. <laughs> Remember, if you want to check out the whole interview, it's on our sister site, Rock History Book. And there's links to that and the podcast of this interview as well in the description of this video. We'll have a next clip from Pete Agnew in two, three days. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel and share our videos. Also like our videos, it makes them perform a lot better. If you want to donate to the channel, you can. There's a PayPal link right in the description, but you can also buy a t-shirt, that helps us too. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.